Hi everyone, so this week we're working on drawings on black paper. So I wanted to go over a few things uh, about drawing on black paper, different techniques and methods and things we need to think about which is as we're creating our drawing. So you can see here I've got my sheet of black paper, got my value scale here to uh, assist in making sure I've got a full range of value, got a blending stump, white eraser, kneaded eraser, and since we're working on black paper, we're going to need to create tone, create value with a white medium, and I'm using a white General's charcoal pencil. Um, I've also got a little stick of white Conte here. So our drawing starting off with the darkest value on our value scale, our black. Right, so in order to create a successful representational drawing with fully developed light and shadow, we've got to incorporate our full range of values here. Everything from our dark grays up to our white. So we want to make sure our drawing has all of these values incorporated into it, uh, but we also want to make sure that they're incorporated in a balanced, organized way. So first off, you're going to want to be able to create the full range of values with your media. So I recommend practicing with it first a little bit. See if you can create this full range of value. I've got my white charcoal pencil here sharpened to that longer, thinner point. This allows me to utilize the technique where I can use the side of the pencil to lay in tone. I'm using the technique of just lightly passing the white medium, the white charcoal, over the surface of the paper, not pressing down, um, just dragging it gently across the paper. We still have the same goals of wanting to achieve evenness and consistency in the tone, so we can use the same techniques that I demonstrate in my previous video about creating even and consistent tone, uh, working in multiple directions, you know, building it up in light layers to get evenness and consistency we want to periodically step back from our drawing a little bit and squint our eyes that'll help help us see inconsistencies in our areas of tone it's too dark in some places or too light in other areas uh, we want to be able to to assess that to see those inconsistencies and Correct. Take the time and effort to correct. So work in multiple directions. Build your value up in layers. Check it often for evenness and consistency. With my Conte here, see how light of a tone I can create with that. Use side edge to get a broader area of tone developed, broader mark. If I keep laying in more and more white, our, our value gets brighter. We can also bring in our blending stump help us kind of smooth out and blend out our areas of tone, a little more evenness and consistency in them. Soft paper towel would also work well. You're gonna to need to practice with whatever white medium you're using to see how it lays out on the paper, get familiar with its texture to develop your own technique for creating this tone. The white charcoal pencil, lay in some more layers of white.
Use your value scale to check. Again, we want to try to achieve a full range. And the more areas of tone, the more drawing we have on our paper, the more we have to compare our different values to each other. So I wanted to get even brighter over here on this area. Values relative, it's largely affected by what's surrounding it. So when you start getting areas of tone next to each other, it gets a little bit easier to assess their, their value. This value up here was appearing pretty bright at first, but now that I've got an even brighter tone, it makes that one appear darker. Get a little bit of that white medium on your blend the end of your blending stump. You could use it as as a drawing instrument to start to lay down tone. Blending stump as a drawing tool can be a little unpredictable, a little inconsistent in about how much it's going to lay down and how to lay it down. Practice with your different erasers too. If you need to go in and and fix an area of tone if it's looking a little too stripey or too inconsistent I might need to go in and, and uh, with an eraser make some changes and corrections so practice with your erasers too to see how they affect uh, the area of tone Get your hard eraser try out the kneaded eraser too Practice making a hard edge and see if you can soften it up. See if you can create that gradual transition. Right. Uh, so I'm gonna make a, a really simple study here, a value sphere study. Create my picture plane. So this drawing on black paper, it's a value drawing. I'm using dry drawing media to create it. We want to take our drawing through the three stages that I demonstrate in the video demonstrating the drawing on tan paper. So the first stage is the block in. And you can use your white medium to do the block in. Like before, just remember to keep your marks light so that you can easily change them and correct them. So I'm going to establish my uh, light source coming in from the upper left. So I got light coming in this way. So I'm gonna place my sphere over here to the, the left of the picture plane a little bit. That'll give me some room for my cast shadow out this way. And this is a good practice for any time you're using a new material or one that you're not familiar with. Uh, sometimes when I get a new sheet of paper or a different type of drawing medium, I'll, I'll do some studies like this so I can get uh, used to the medium and see what it does. Uh, you know, a value scale and then a value sphere. Those are some good practice exercises to complete to get more used to and familiar with the medium before you get into um, more complete, fully developed drawing. Got a few bulges and flat spots in my contours and my sphere that I'm cleaning up a little bit and shaping. Uh, my light source is coming from this direction, so I'll have highlight over here. This other side will be my form reviewing shadow. Put, a, put an edge back here. So my sphere is sitting on a table. That's at back edge of the table in there. 
then my cast shadow is going to be an ellipse, right? Direction of my light source kind of kind of help me figure out where my cast shadow is going to begin and end. What's receiving light directly is going to be uh, on this light side on my value sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and start to lay in tone on it. The brightest white value will be where the light rays are hitting it more most directly through this area on the sphere. So I'm starting there. Start applying tone to objects, to forms. That's where evenness and consistency are going to really come into play. So practice creating even and consistent tone in your value scales, value sphere. some Conte to quickly punch up that highlight area. Start to blend it out a little bit to get a little more evenness and consistency in there. about the roundness of this sphere. Since it's a curved, rounded form, as we get further, as the planes of our sphere turn away from our light source, it should gradually get darker and darker, right? So we should have a, a nice, gradual, smooth transition in value from the light to the dark. And I'm creating a little bit more of a harsh edge there because I don't want to lose where our, our core shadow is, the darkest part of the shadow shape. I've also got light hitting the surface that our sphere is sitting on, so it's going to be receiving some light. Maybe it's a little lighter over here on the left. My light is over here on the left. I could, make, I could spend some time to make a nice gradual transition from light to dark just on your ground plane. cast shadow. You'll see this with shadow shapes. The edges of them are a little crisper the closer they are to the object. The further away they get, the blurrier those edges become. It's a little subtlety that I like to put in there. There will be a little bit of light bouncing off that ground plane and reflecting back up on the underside of my sphere. Reflected light on the, other, on the underside, put that in there. This transition through here, I want to try to smooth it out a little more. necessarily going to see this contour like that over there. So as we're creating these value drawings, that's one thing we want to keep in mind. 
as we're developing light and shadow, our line work starts to go away, dissolves into our light and shadow shapes. Uh, I purposefully erased it through this area here. And the more that those lines disappear, and the more that we create edges through differences in value rather than with line, the more representational and realistic our drawing will look. And also adjusting other edges too. Uh, I want to pull some of this white tone up a little bit here through this transition. It's still too harsh, right? You see that edge in there, that abrupt transition between light and dark, that creates the illusion of an edge, right? And we want this sphere to appear rounded. So I want to want to blend out, get rid of any edge-like transitions. Certain forms we do want a harsher edge, right? For example, the surface that my the, uh, sphere is sitting on has an abrupt change in plane back edge is flat and then it drops off. It's a really abrupt change in direction so we'll get a more distinct transition between the light and the dark. Whereas on this rounded curved form that transition is going to be more gradual, smoother. Let's get some more white developed in highlight light area on our screen. a little more even and consistent. I'm going to work in multiple directions. If you're trying to get that gradual transition between a light and a shadow shape, works pretty well to work in a direction that's perpendicular to that core shadow line. So if I make marks in this direction, then I'm pulling value from the light, in this case from the light, down into the, down toward the darker area, the shadow. That might work a little better. punch up this highlight on the sphere. I want that to be the brightest value in my whole composition here. Every time you pass, pass over it with your blending stump, it pulls a lot of that up. So um, at some point I'm going to leave that blending stump alone and then fine-tune the value with pencil. Again, that transition between the highlight and the rest of the, the surrounding value, I also want that to be gradual too. If it's too abrupt, it'll also possibly read as an edge. Flatten out this form that I want to read as round. Squint your eyes, step back, assess it every so often. Might pull up, try to blend out this area through here where it's getting a little too abrupt. Your kneaded eraser also works really well as a blending tool. Maybe a little better since it's not pulling up as much of that white medium as my blending stump was. I'm just really lightly passing a flat 
area of the kneaded eraser over, over my drawing. If I press too hard, it's going to pull up too much, right? Starting to lose some of my circular shape that I started with, so I can always go back in and uh, reshape that up. Too distinct of an edge through here. Uh, you know, I can spend some more time on this to, to smooth out transitions, even out that tone. So, you know, when you're working on your drawing, have a value scale on hand. Uh, when you're assessing your drawing for that full range of values, you know, use that value scale. See if you can determine where each of these values are in your drawing. Do you have enough of them? Could you use more? So have at it. Let's get to drawing.